Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to start study about the graph data structure. Graph is a data structure that has applications across computer science in multiple domains. So, it is really used across the industry in solving some real world problems. Let us start the discussion about graphs with a definition of what a graph is. Graph can be defined as a collection of nodes. These nodes can also be known as vertices connected by edges. For example, let us consider some nodes. These nodes can represent any arbitrary kind of data. For example, let us have four nodes A, B, C and D. And let us assume that an edge between the two nodes implies that these two nodes are friends of each other. So here each node implies a person and each edge implies a friendship relation. So suppose this is our graph. In this particular graph, the nodes are A, B, C and D. Do note here that I have used curly braces here. Let me spend a few moments on differentiating between curly braces and parentheses. Pairs can be of two types. The first type is known as ordered pair. These are the pairs where order matters. For example, in this case, A, B is not equal to B, A because in this pair, order is mattering and the first element in the left pair is not equal to the first element in the right pair. These pairs are represented by parentheses. The second kind of pairs are unordered pairs. As is itself explained by the name, the order doesn't matter here, which means that A, B is equal to B, A. An unordered pair is represented by a curly brace. If you recall, this is also representation of a set. And also, as you might know, in set, order doesn't matter. Let us go back to our definition. We told that a graph is a collection of nodes. As I have represented the nodes by a set or by curly braces, this means the order of nodes doesn't really matter. We could have written this as P, comma A, comma C, comma D as well. Okay. So, graph is a collection of nodes and edges. So, if you see in this particular graph, we see that there is no sense of direction. There is no directed sign like A to B. So, we see that these edges are bidirectional edges. For bidirectional edges, the order doesn't matter. And bidirectional edges can thus be represented by curly braces. So, for this particular graph, our set of edges is going to be an edge from AB and an edge from AD. So, we can represent edges as A, B and A, T. Great. So, let us formally define graphs again. So, graph is basically an ordered pair of vertices and edges. What I mean by ordered pair is that vertices comes first. So, each of these vertices and edges are sets in themselves. So, the above graph can be written as B, A, C, D and A, B and A, D. The graph data structure looks very similar to the tree data structure that you might have seen before. But there are some differences between a tree and a graph. Let us spend some moments discussing about those. In a tree, there is a rule of connection between two nodes. For example, in a tree, we remember there is an edge from parent to child and there is only one incoming edge to a child. So, what are the total number of edges in the tree? Yes, it is equal to n minus 1 where n is the number of nodes of the tree. There is no such rule in graph. In graph, there can be arbitrary numbers of edges. There can be multiple edges to a same node. For example, let us draw another graph. In this graph, we see that there are three edges. 
Similarly, there can be an edge from the node to itself. This is known as a self loop. Also, there can be multiple edges between two nodes. Such a graph in which there can be multiple edges between a pair of nodes is also known as a multigraph. Great. Now, let us see some of the properties of the edges of a graph. As we saw till now, that the graph has no order or no direction of an edge. Till now, we have seen only edges like A to B where there is no arrow. Such edges are known as undirected edges. Also, they are known as bidirectional edges. What bidirectional basically means is that A, in this particular edge, there is a relation from A to B as well as there is a relation from B to A. So, other than undirected edges, there are directed edges. Indirected edges, these are firstly represented using an arrow. So, suppose we have this particular edge. This means that there is a relation from A to B, but it doesn't mean that there is a relation from B to A. So, you might have graphs where there can be undirected edges only, where you might also have a graph where there are only directed edges, or you might have a graph that have mix of undirected and directed edges. If a graph has only undirected edges, it is known as an undirected graph or normally a graph. Whereas, if a graph has only directed edges, it is known as a directed graph or a digraph. Great. Now, let us study some of the real life use cases of graphs. As we discussed earlier, a graph can be used to represent a collection of nodes and any kind of relationship between those. Thus, graphs find a lot of use case in social networks. Consider for example, Facebook. In Facebook, each node can be a person. Let us say, there are 5 people on Facebook, P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Let us say P1 and P2 are friends, also P1 and P3 are friends. Similarly, P2 and P4 are friends and P4 and P5 are friends. Let us also say that P2 and P5 are friends. As you can see, this is nothing but a graph of nodes being P1, P2, P3 up to P5. Also, what are the edges of this graph? It's clear it is P1, P2, P2, P4, P4, P5, P1, P3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And also P2, P5. What we see from the graph of Facebook is that it has only undirected edges. At least that is true for the case of the friendship relationship in a graph of Facebook. It might not be true for relationship of if a person likes a page or not. Can you tell me a graph that is not undirected for a social network? Yes, we can take example of Twitter. In Twitter, if a person A follows a person B, let us say we draw an edge from A to B if a person A follows a person B. Does this mean that B also follows A? No. So, in this case, we can say that Twitter has a digraph. Okay. So, due to this property that Facebook, Twitter, etc. can represent their data as graph, it allows all the graph algorithms to get applied on the problems that Facebook, etc. try to solve. Suppose, Facebook has to solve the problem on suggesting some new friends to person P1. How might they do that? As you can see from the graph, E1 is already friends with P2 and he is also friends with P3. Who do you think we can recommend to P1 as his friends? One good use case or the friendship relations can be those people who are second level connections or second level friends to P1. What it means is that they are not friends of P1 but are friends of a friend of P1. So, we see that P4 and P5 are friends of one of the friends of P1, which is P2. So, we can recommend P4 and P5 
2p1 has friend suggestions. This problem is nothing but equivalent to find nodes at shortest distance of 2 from a particular node. We will study shortest distance and all other things in detail in future videos. But this can be act as a good motivation of why graph is an important data structure to study. Also, another important application of graphs is in the whole internet or web. Have you seen pages? Whenever you visit a website, for example, you are visiting scalar.com. A scalar.com web page might link to another web page, let us say wikipedia.com. It might not be, the, be true that wikipedia.com is also linking to scalar.com, but still we get an idea that the hyperlink graphs of the web can be represented as a graph. This is actually the reasoning of the whole domain of web scraping and crawling. Let us think how Google would like to index the pages on the internet to show you search results. What they do is basically they start from a seed page. For example, let us say that their crawler starts from wikipedia.com. From wikipedia.com, they try to find all the links to different websites that are available there. For example, from wikipedia.com, there might be five different websites that are linked. Now, what crawler will do? Well, iteratively visit each of those websites and then continue the process to further websites that are linked from those web pages. It also needs to ensure that it is not entering a cycle, basically entering a web page that it has already seen, else the process will never converge. Also, as the number of pages on the web is a lot or almost in billions, this process in the case of Google would mostly be distributed. But ignoring the complexity of distributed aside, the problem of web crawling is equivalent to graph traversal. And we shall be studying those in depth also in the future videos. Before we end this particular lecture, let us actually study about other kind of graphs which is weighted or unweighted graphs. Till now, we have seen graphs which can have directed or undirected edges, but there was nothing mentioned about those edges. Let us draw a sample graph again. Let us say this time we are drawing a graph of five nodes. Let us have some edges. Suppose this time our graph is representing a road network of a city. What I mean by a road network is that if there is an edge from node A to node B, this means that there is a road from city A to city B. Thus, our nodes here are equivalent to cities and edges are equivalent to roads. Now, suppose city A is Bombay, city B is Nagpur, city D can be Pune, and let us say E is Delhi, and C can be something like Calcutta. Now, do you think that the distance between Mumbai and Nagpur is same as the distance between Nagpur and Pune? Or is the distance between Mumbai and Delhi same as the distance between Mumbai and Pune? No. So, in this case, it makes sense to actually put some information on the edge. This information might be something which mentions the distance between two cities or the length of the road connecting those two cities. So, let me write some arbitrary numbers and they might not be geographically correct or even far away from that. Let us say this is 5, this is 10, this is 8, this is 100 and this is suppose 1000. Here, each particular weight or information on the web on the edge is representing something extra about that particular edge. So, such graphs that have some information, normally an integral information associated with them are known as weighted graphs and edges that have that information are known as weighted edges. On the other hand, graphs that don't have any weighted edge are known as unweighted graphs. A normal Facebook graph can be considered as an unweighted graph, but suppose we had to add some kind of weights to graph, what might they represent? Let us say we 
Smith, we decide to write tweets on the Facebook graph to represent the closeness of friendship between two people. Suppose our modified Facebook graph is A, B, C and D. Let us say A and C are friends, A and B are friends, B and C are friends and B and D are friends. Till this time, this particular graph is an unweighted graph. Suppose I say that A and B are strong friends or are very close friends. We can actually use some numbers to represent the level of friendship between two people. So suppose A and C can be first one level friend, C and B can be one, B and D can be one, but A and B can be a friends of level two, which means they are very strong. Friends. So what we have seen till now is that graphs can represent very interesting types of data and due to the graph algorithms, we can solve some interesting problems in the real domain. In fact, the whole study of all these graph problems is in a domain known as graph theory. We will be studying a lot of those interesting properties in our future videos. So make sure to subscribe to our channel to get notified when we launch the other videos on this particular topic. Thank you. Hello everyone. Hi. Today we will be solving the graph problems. Today we will be solving only the two problems and they will be probably the toughest ones uh, that are available on the platform. Okay. So yeah. So the problems that we are going to solve today is clone graph that some of you had requested. And the second problem is uh, converting a sorted list to a binary search tree. Okay. Cool. Let us begin. So first of all, let us start with the clone graph problem. On the platform. So the problem says that we are given an undirected graph. Okay. And each node in the graph contains a label and a list of its neighbors. Okay. And nothing else is given in the question. Great. Let us first start with the clone graph problem. What exactly the problem is that you are given a graph. Okay. You're given a graph and you have to clone it and you have to make a copy of it make an exact copy of it using new nodes so basically suppose a graph has v nodes as you all know that graph is nothing but a collection of vertices and edges right uh, so suppose let us say that a graph has v nodes and e edges in that case we have to create a copy of the graph with v new nodes such that they are connected in the exact same way as the as they are connected in the original graph that is given to us okay uh, theoretically speaking graph is nothing but a collection of nodes and vertices those nodes can represent anything it can be a social network people it can be ideas or it can be a lot of things okay okay so whenever a problem comes that when you have to create a copy of something the best intuition that you can get is you if you know if you have an hash map in the hash map you can store that hey for this node this is the copy of it okay and then you can traverse the original graph correct so what i can do in this case is suppose i can maintain a map of basically in this graph that is given to us each node is represented using a data type which is undirected graph node i mean like we are not given an adjacency list uh, similarly uh, the list the nodes that are connected from a particular node are represented by a vector of undirected graph nodes represented by the variable neighbors okay okay so yeah what i say is that hey if i have a global map that stores that uh, i'm going to represent okay this is a map uh, which stores that first node copy suppose basically a map is nothing but a key value pair right so this means that the copy of node k is a new node v this is what I will store in my map because I need to uh, know if I have already created a copy of that particular node because a graph can have cycles. Okay. So if I go into a cycle, I already, I need some way to ensure that, Hey, if I have already created a copy of this particular node earlier, right? So that means I will need some kind of a map. Okay. So, and in interview with platform, if you ever create a global variable, you have to clear it the very first thing because Otherwise, the results from the previous run remain. Okay. Uh, how will I create the copy? Let us say I have a function which returns the copy of a node, copy of the node that is passed to that function. Okay. Okay. So the very first thing that I should check is if a copy of that node has already been created. Okay. I mean, like if 
mp.find node is not equal to mp.end. But basically, let me say if mp.find node is equal to mp.end, this means that a copy has not been created, right? So this means uh, a copy has not already been created. And now I will try to create a copy. How can I create a copy? Uh, I can say that mp node is equal to a new, uh, the same thing, new undirected graph node. And if I see here the constructor of the undirected graph node, you should pass the label, the label, basically the value that is stored inside that node in the constructor. Okay. So what I can say, I can say new undirected graph node. And what is the value of that node? It will be equal to the node ka label. So it will be node label. Great. So now I have created a copy of that node in the graph. Now I have to fill the adjacency list or basically fill that neighbors of the copy, right? I mean, like I need to ensure that whatever the neighbors were there in this node, a copy of those neighbors is also present in my new node, right? So what I can do is I can say for auto, the nodes that are in the neighbors of the node. Okay. Now I should pass copy of that like a copy of that in the new nodes neighbors. I can say that pass a copy node of those nodes, right? Okay. Once I have done that, I will like now my copy is also completely formed. I will go out of this if condition and I can just return MP of node. Okay. Initially, I have, I will have to make a check that if node is equal to null, because if a node is null and I pass it to my function, then mp dot find null might represent something or return mp null might be undefined. So if node is null, I just return null. That means there is no copy of a null graph. Else I just return copy node of the starting node, which is node. I think this should work. Yes, this works. This is a very simple solution. What is the time complexity of this solution going to be? I think we are going to create one copy of each node and to create a copy of each node, you have to traverse order of V plus E time. So the time taken will be something equal to order of V plus E. Okay. Time complexity will be order of V plus E. Why will that be the case? Because I will be traversing each edge at most twice, at most twice because this is an undirected graph. So once I can traverse this edge from this side to this and once from the reverse and each node only once, because once I have traversed a node once, the next time this loop will directly return. I'm like, I won't ever pass this thing, right? So I will traverse each node exactly once. So that is the time complexity going to be. What is the space complexity going to be? The space complexity is also going to be order of V plus E, right? Why? Because I'm going to create v new nodes and each node will have a list right each node will have a neighbor list some of those lists will be equal to e will be equal to 2e actually so still it becomes order of v plus e so yeah we got 493 points just from one question this question seemed to be a diff bit difficult one but once you see that i mean like this thing can be easily maintained using a map the problem is a very easy problem to solve okay Great. Let us try to solve this problem also. So first, try, let us try to solve convert sorted list to a binary search tree. This problem, if you have already seen the video that we created for linked list, okay. If you have seen that video and you know the trick as to how we can find the middle element of a linked list, this problem will be a very easy solvable problem for you. Okay. Let us try to see how we will do that. So what the problem says is that you are given a singly linked list like hey, one comma two comma three. We have to create and basically the elements are in sort uh, ascending order and we have to convert it to a height balanced binary search tree. What we mean by a height balanced binary search tree is that uh, the height of the left subtree and the height of the right subtree should be almost equal. What I mean by almost is that the worst case, the difference between those two heights should be one. Okay. I mean like one left subtree can have a height of three, the right subtree can have a height of four or vice versa. That is fine but no more than difference of one. Great. So now if I say, if I tell you that, hey, that if we have a linked list like this, one comma, two comma, three comma, four comma, five, and now you need to divide it into two equal parts, which node will you like to create as the middle node? Obviously you will like to have the middle node as the root node, right? 
you would want that hey my three is the root node and then one comma two go on the left side and four comma five go on the right side because then I'm equally dividing both the sides into equal halves, right? So I need some way to find this middle node in a linked list. How can we find a middle node in the linked list? We can find it easily using the here and tortoise approach, right? That we had discussed even in the linked list video that I had taken. Okay, so let's try to do that. How can we now use this? If A is null, if A is null, let us say that that is a base case. If A is null, in that case, there is no tree. So I can just return null. That is fine. So the very first thing that I have to find is find middle node. Make middle node the root of tree. Okay. Recurse on left and make it the left child. Similarly, I can do recurse on right and make it the right child. Right. Okay. So first of all, I have to find the middle node. How do we find the middle node? I say that I use two pointers. That is the here and daughter's approach. A slow pointer which starts at A and a fast pointer which starts at A as well. Okay. I also need to know a previous slow why the same intuition was given in the, the link list video as well. That why we need a previous slow as well. Okay. So what I will do is I will do while fast not equal to null and fast next is also not equal to null. Previous slow is equal to slow. A slow is equal to slow connect. So the slow pointer always iterates by one position, whereas the fast pointer iterates by two position. Okay. Uh, so we now the slow will point where? Okay. Suppose our slow was here initially. Initially our slow was here and fast was here. Now fast will go here. While slow will go here. Then fast will go here. And slow will go here. So slow will be pointing to the root node. If the number of nodes are odd, finally, slow will be pointing to the root node. Okay, so that case is fine. Let us say that when the number of nodes are even, but we will do then. Six. Initially, my slow will be here and my fast will be here. Slow will go here, fast will go here. Slow comes here, fast comes here. Then slow comes here, fast comes here. In this case, in this case also, my fast is pointing here. Fast came here, then came here. Fast should not have come here, right? Fast should have gone somewhere earlier. So my fast goes here and my slow is here. Then slow goes here and my fast goes here. Then slow goes here and my fast goes here. Okay. So my fast goes to null, right? Yeah. So there are two cases. If fast is null, that is the case one. And the case two is if fast is uh, not null, right? Okay. In any case, previous slow is going to point to the node that I have to. Let us say I always make the slow node as my root. Okay. Let us say that because slow is always going to point to almost middle. So I can make that as the root. So I can say tree node value, uh, tree node value at root is equal to new tree node, which has value equal to slow key well, right? Uh, slow me. Yep. Slow key well. Great. So now I know this, then I have to do two recursions, right? The very first recursion will start from the right side. So I can say root right is equal to just recursing this sorted list to PST. But now the root node will change to a slow connect. Okay, because that is what is going to be the right side. So that is one thing that we can do. Then what can I do? I have found that now I have to somehow delete that, right? I'm like, I need to ensure that the deletion is also done. Then I can say, so this thing will create my right child. This will create my right child. X is equal to null. So now I can do that. So basically I divided my tree. I and then I recurse on that side. Now this is perfect. But how will I recurse on the left? To recurse on the left, I need to pass the, what we say, the starting. That is still the starting, right? But I need to make sure that the previous loca next is null, right? Okay. So the, the issue that I am facing is that if there is only one single node, what I will do? I can do that. I think I can handle that as a base case. If a next is equal to null, 
that means there is only one node then i can just return a new tree node of a key value that i can do that so that will work yes and so yeah if previous row is not equal to null that can only happen when there is only one node so my previous row will never be null so yeah i can do that i can say that hey if previous row is not equal to null ideally it should never be null right because previous row is null only if the value of row was never incremented and that can happen only if there was one node so this should always be true so we say previous row ka next is equal to null so i am now dividing my linked list and then i can say that root ka left is equal to sorted list to bsp a okay cuz that is what the starting node is still going to remain so i think this should work what i'm doing next row is equal to row ka next this is list node and do i have any other issue i don't think so this should work yes this is a correct answer i don't think i have any other case which i might be missing so let us try to submit it i hope i don't do any mess up today yep we got 294 out of 300 points great we will end up today's lecture hey everyone myself robin kurana today we will discuss some of the questions of graph data structures and algorithms and one of the guy demanded me to solve the problem world ladder uh, let's start with that problem only uh, let's start with the difficult version of it so let's say if i solve this so that then it will be your homework to solve the the easiest part of this algorithm fine so let's take this problem now now the problem is we have been given two words start and end and a dictionary find the shortest transformation sequence from start to end such that only one letter can be changed at a time and each intermediate word must exist in a dictionary okay and if there are multiple such sequence of shortest length return all of them refer to the examples for more detail okay the question is we have been given two words let's say it as source and destination and we need to reach from source to destination and what we can do we can just modify a word in a source and we need to check whether the modified word it is exist it exists in a dictionary or not if it exists in a dictionary then we will repeat this procedure again and again ultimately uh, we will reach to our destination so we need to do it in a shortest possible way and we need to print out all the possible sequence that is possible fine and uh, we have been given a constraints that all words must have same length and all words contain only lower case alphabetical characters nice so these are the constraints that we have been given and what is the input format it's given that the first argument of the that is start and end and we have been given a dictionary as well and we need to return all the possible transformational sequence fine okay now let's think of example we have been given a start as hit and and as coke we need to check what are the possible sequences such that i can reach from hit to coke okay let's try to analyze the problem in this problem we have been given start as hit and and as coke we have been given start as hit and and as coke okay as we have been given a constraint that in the dictionary we will all we have all the words of same length and that will be equal to our start or end so we have been given a dictionary and in the dictionary we have word hot and uh, we have word dot as well as we have word dog and we have word load and we have word log okay so let's uh, let's try to analyze let's first try to think what we can do to solve this problem okay we have been given a first word hit so if i want to make transformation as per the constraints what i can do i can only modify one word of that particular sequence or of that particular word so what i can do either i can modify h or either i can modify i or either i can modify t now one thing that what i can do if okay and what how many possible ways such that i can modify h how many in how many possible ways i can modify h okay the the thing is i can modify h to a 
B, C, D, because I have also been given a constraint that each of the word is kind of a lowercase alphabetical character. So that means we know that there are only 26 lowercase alphabetical characters. So if I want to modify H, there will be only 26 possible cases. So which, which will be A, B, C, D up to Z. And likewise, I need to do it for I and likewise, I need to do it for T. But at one time, I can only modify one word of it. And, and, and the thing is, if I modify it, let's say I, I have hit and I just modify H to A. So will this uh, transformation is valid? It won't be. Why? Because I need to also be sure that this particular word must also lie in dictionary. Okay, these are the things that is being given to me in the question itself. Okay, so now let's try to think. Let's try to build the algorithm to solve this thing. Now, one thing that is coming to my mind that one thing that what we can do to solve this question is, let's say we have been given hit. Now I just iterate over all the possible cases that, that I can think of. And for each case, but I can check whether the given modification exists in the dictionary or not. If it exists in a dictionary, I will just create a path. Let's just start, in, let's just start create a path. From hit, where I can go to? In one transformation, can I go to hot? Yes, I can. Because in one transformation, I can modify I and it turns out into O. And the thing is H and T, which is which remains same. So there is only one modification and that is allowed in one transformation. So I am good with that. So what is the other thing that has been given to me? Okay, uh, the other word in the dictionary is dot. Can I change hit to dot? No, because the thing is in dot, we have been given, there are two changes, two modifications, but in one transformation, I can change only one word. So that is not possible. Similarly, dog is not possible. And likewise, load is also not possible. And similarly, log is also not possible. So there is only one transformation for this, which is hot. Now from hot, where I can go? I can go to dot. Yeah, for sure, I can go to dot. Okay, uh, may I go any other place from dot? May I go any other place from hot? Uh, I can't go at do. I can't go at, okay, I can go at load as well. Nice. But I can't go at low. Okay, so now from load and dot and from dot where I can go from dot I can go at do and any other place I can go I can go at load again as well and from load I can go at low nice and from dog I can reach to co and likewise from load as well I can reach to log and from log I can reach to co but I need there is also been given to me that I just need to concerned about all the uh, transformations which are of smaller length, all the shortest shortest length. So what I figured out that the answer for this will be this possible sequence as well as this possible sequence because this possible this this is also a possible sequence but this has a greater length and I need to return the sequence of shorter length. So these are the two possible sequence that I just reached and as we can see that the answer is hit hot dot do cook and hit hot load log cook and so the thing is oh now the thing is we analyze the problem and now we somehow trying to build a solution and somehow we reach somewhere so the thing is now if i at some some point let's say this is my string the eventually what will happen i will end up with some sort of a, a graph like structure which will be something like i will end at some place like this something like this and uh, and it will be something like a peer will be something like this. And in the end, I know that as I'm concerned about shortest path only, so the number of levels from which I am coming to end, it will be fixed. It is fixed. That is kind of the shortest. That is fine. The number of levels, basically the shortest length of transformations that I can surely say that. Okay. If that is the case, now what I can think to solve this question? Adil just told me that, yeah, we can apply the BFS approach. Why we can apply the BFS, BFS approach here? Basically, uh, we need to concern about levels and we need to figure out the shortest path. And the thing is, when we are solving the problems of shortest path, it's easy to use BFS technique. Why? Because we need to reach to some destination. And what we are doing in the BFS, we are just moving step by step. In what step, which, which of the possible area that I can cover? And in the next step, which is the possible area that I can cover? So the thing is, 
as I explored in the BFS, all the possible cases that is being explored in one step. So in that way, when we are solving a problem for shortest path, it's always ideal to use BFS. So they are good. That is a good observation. So what we can do, we can apply some sort of BFS technique here. But the point is, let's say I applied BFS and from here, I reached here. But then what? The question is, I need to print. I need to print all the possible sequences. And if I need to print all the possible sequences and I am at here and I reached here, the thing is, but I can do, I need to basically while doing BFS, but I need to make sure I need to track some information that I'm thinking right now. If I track some information in such a way that basically that will help me to explore all the possibilities. The thing is, in the end, I will just end up here. When I end up here, what I can do, okay, I can build some sort of graph that will eventually be something like this. If I am able to build that sort of graph, then I'm done. What I need to do, I need to, the question then becomes really simple. Uh, if I if I'm able to build that sort of graph, then what I need to do from here to here or here to here, what I need to do, I need to just figure out all the possible parts all the possible paths because eventually all the paths will make me here if this is the graph then this is basically kind of i can explore all the paths which is by the basic common programming paradigm through backtracking if i use the backtracking approach that then i can easily explore all the paths so the point is now the question is how i'm able to build this sort of this sort of structure this is the concern if i need to build this sort of structure Okay, one thing somebody just explained me, we can use BFS, but how? If I'm using BFS, let's say I explored this, I explored this, and I explored this, as well as I explored this. And if I mark something as visited, so if this point is reached from here, I need to also be make sure that if this point reached from here, so this path I need to make in consideration. So one thing is coming to my mind, but I can do for each particular Note that I can just say it as note because I just turned it down into a graph. So what I can do, I can just store all other nodes from which it comes as its parent. Then it becomes some sort of simple. And if I just track this sort of information, then what I can do, let's say I am here. What I can do, I just go to all of its parents. Let's say here, 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 here. And I use the backtracking technique. Then I reach and I explore all the parents of this node. In this way, what I end up with, I end up with all the paths possible to transform this word into this. Sounds like a good approach. The point is we can follow this approach. Okay, so now let's uh, try to solve this question. Let's first try to analyze what are the things that we need to consider while solving this question. The first thing is we need a, we need a some sort of cube Okay, let's say we just uh, build a queue first that is required. And after then, what, what else do we need? We need to store parents. Uh, we need that information as well. And uh, what else do we need? We need, to, we need to maintain a queue. We need to store parents. And uh, what we need? Uh, we need to maintain some sort of level information as well. So let's, we need to track some sort of level information as well. Okay. I guess these all are the three things that will help me to build that structure that I just discussed. Okay, it's okay. Let's try to solve it here only. Let's say we have been, uh, we need to track level. So let's try to analyze. So what I, what I was telling to solve this problem, what sort of information I need? One thing I need Q, if I need to maintain this sort of structure. And the other thing that I need, I need some sort of parents information as well. Because I need to build that structure and I need to track of levels as well. So I need the information of level as well. So which sort of data structure that I use. So to maintain all this information. First, let me try what I need, what sort of information that I need. Let me first create a some sort of hash set because I need to find in the dictionary. So that operation will become optimized. So it will consider a string and that will basically my dictionary. And let's populate it with the dictionary that is being given to me. Now, what else do I need? I need to, I need the level information and which sort of data structure that I can use 
I have been given a string and I need to map it to integer. So hash map will work in this case. So if that is good and that will be kind of level information and uh, that is good. Now, what else do I need? I need some sort of level. I need apart from level. I need parents information as well. So, and that is also I can use hash hash map for this as well. So for string as the other thing is, I can take it as vector. And that that is basically storing the parents parents information. Fine. Okay, that is cool. So these sort of things that I need. Okay. Uh, so I need a queue as well because I need to apply some sort of BFS thing. Let's say I created a queue. So in that queue, uh, let's first, okay. The point is while I'm creating this big structure, if I just start from here, I will end here. And uh, the point is what, what I basically want to tell that if I start from some place, I end up at another place. So it's good if I uh, start from end so that basically I will have that information from the start as well, then I, I, I can explore the parents from the start. Then I can basically easily solve this problem. But uh, what I basically want to say, let's say I just start from here and I end up here. Now, if, now the point is, the point is what I'm trying to say, let's say I just start from something and I end at some place. Now the thing is, then what I need to do from end, I need to explore all the paths and then ultimately reach to the end. So in the answer, what I will have, and in the starting and start in the end. But what I basically want, I need starting the starting and the transformations and then end. That's the basic transformation that I want. So the one thing that I can do, I can modify start and end so that the things will become easier. So let's first do that thing that looks simple to me that I can do that thing. So let's say I just first did that thing. Now what I can do, I can push. What I can do, I can push my start in the queue as well. And I can update the level information for start as it is at zeroth level. So that's okay. Now I need to apply my simple BFS thing. And it is something like this. I need to first take out the element from the queue and I need to pop out that element from the queue as well. Then what I need to do, okay. Then I need to modify that thing. For each word that I need to do, as I explained you how the transformation will be, it will go from all the way. And for each word, I need to do this thing. Now, let's say I created a new word and, and the new word is equal to my actual word. And I modify the ith character of it with with first A, then B, then C, that's what I'm doing. Now I need to check some things. What are the things that I need to check? The very first thing that I need to check, whether that new word is present in the dictionary or not. So I can safely do it like dictionary, but find new word is now equal to new word. So first thing that I need to do this, now and I am sure that this word exists in a dictionary. Now I need to check whether that word already occurred or not. So I have that information. I'm just tracking this information through levels. What are the nodes that I just found? And what are the nodes that I just found in this particular level or at any level? So what I can do to do that, but I can just uh, find new word. Okay, there can be multiple cases. If that word I haven't encountered yet, that means this is the first time that I'm encountering this word. So that is good. So that, so then I need to push that word because I'm applying BFS and this, this, this node is, you can say it's not visited yet. So I need to visit that node. So I need to push that new word into my queue. So now as I push that word into the queue, now the other thing that I need to do apart from that, I need to mark the parents as I already explained to you. So. The parent for this new world uh, will be equal to the word itself because I am just coming to that new word uh, from word. Oh, sorry. It's not, I just keep it as a vector. So it's good to do this way. So I just keep the parent's information as well. Else if other than that, 
as i already explained that uh, there might be a possibility that i just occur to that node from other some other node as well but the thing is i just take that conceit uh, take that particular node valid only when when that particular node is just one level away from that node because only then this is also contributing to the shortest path otherwise it is it won't be contributing to the shortest path so then i when i need to check uh, okay the basically the level of new word should be equal to level of word plus one that makes sense because i already encountered that new word in that case i need to just add i need to push the parent only fine now okay the point is is somehow my word comes to the end so that means i already explored that particular node in which i am interested so there is no need to explore further so i can just break out here and that's a good thing that i can do okay so if i do in that way i just build that structure which i explained to you yeah i need to maintain okay sorry fine okay now the point is now i maintain that big structure that i was interested in now what i need to do i need to explore all the paths so i need to apply some sort of backtracking technique here so how i can apply the backtracking technique let's say i need one some sort of answer information let's say i just keep it as here now let's say i just track my in other kind of the particular part here matlab that current part that should i say now explore i need to explore all the possibilities so i just make a function explore which will help me to explore every possible path and that will basically take my start which is actually the end because what i just okay i need what i can do before this i can do one thing i can just check one thing that whether there is a possibility to figure out and or not by the transformations so if there is a possibility that my level thing must be populated if if i just reach that that particular node so i can just check if level dot find and equal to level dot end that means i haven't figured out that any transformation that will end up into end so i can safely return empty vector here so let's say i just declared it in a way something like this so i can return answer like that now let's say uh, 99 now i need to explore let's say this is my end and i need to reach to start okay let's first try to think like try to make a function and what that function should return i don't want anything from that answer because i will populate every answer in that particular answer vector so i need to pass that answer vector as well and i need to pass what is my current path the which i am exploring now so let's say i i just say it as current and other than that uh, i need to know the parents information as well so these are the things that is required i guess so let's create a function explore and i just uh, as i told you that in this function i need start i need and i need answer as well It will be something like this i need my current as well as the parents this parent basically it is string and vector of int fine now let's try to uh, solve this function now what sort of logic should come here uh, the first thing that that will come here is if i end up from particular node to the other node the basically from start to the end that means i have explored one path so i need to push that particular path into my answer vector answer vector and i can return from here because i need not to explore any further otherwise what i need to do from any particular state okay let's say i am at given start from any particular start i need to explore all its parents and i need to move to its parents so for in let's say i just iterate over 
all the parents of start and uh, what i can do first i can push that particular parent into my path uh, so what i can do for that as it is a vector so i can safely push that particular node and that will be i now what i can do now i can explore further and now my kind of start will be this particular node and will remain same current bit smaller and my answer that is the thing that i need after exploring i need to backtrack so i can pop that particular element yeah if i do in that way in the end i just need to return answer okay uh, let's first try to analyze whether we are doing in a good way or not is there anything that we missed so first we created a dictionary nice and that dictionary basically the words that we have been given and then we created a vector sorry that we created a vector of four parents sorry hash map for parents then we created a queue then we created a one more hash map for level information and then we swap it as we know why we are doing this now we are pushing in the queue for start and we are keeping the level of start as zero okay we are not updating the level so what we can do we can update the level of new word basically it will be equal to word plus one nice that thing we should do now we are just popping out the word and we are just checking if we end up into the end state we need to just break out from this otherwise we are iterating and we are just modifying each and every word of that particular each and every character of that particular word with all the modifications possible okay i'm just doing it in a brute force way now let's say this is my new word and i'm just modified it and now i'm checking whether that new word is exist in the dictionary or not if this new word is is i found it in the dictionary then okay then only i need to bother about any case otherwise i don't need to bother about anything if i found out that thing then i need to check whether in the level information i have that in word or not. if i don't have any word then means that word is not visited yet i need to make it visit it as well i need to keep track of parents information as well and i need to push that in, uh, into my queue fine otherwise what i need to do if that word is just one level away from this so i need to consider that particular row route as well so i can do something like this that is fine so now what i am doing i am just declaring my answer and i am doing the backtracking technique if i am haven't found that i need and return the empty answer and now what i can do okay let's keep keep it as current path and i am exploring all the possible paths with uh, the information that is being given to me okay and now what i am doing if i am found something start as end that means i reached at the end i need to basically push the current nice and other than that sorry it's cut now i am pushing that particular information is out something am i missing anything now it looks fine to me let's test oh okay let's see in function explore okay one thing he is telling that what the way we did is wrong. we need to uh, we have a current here yeah we have a current oh sorry uh, i i did it in a wrong way i need to pass the parent as well i need to pass the parent information as well and basically that is vector string string yeah that is the error here i guess other than that yeah that is cool it's it's cool okay i think in this bit we are pushing the ith element for the start that shouldn't be the issue here yeah? and i am exploring okay that's another issue wait let me think what is wrong here and have we missed anything these are the things okay yeah and i am checking whether can created a map so now it won't be an issue sorry so now again there is an error wait oh it's kind of map it's kind of a map and 
Uh, other than that, current is fine and everything is fine. That's a clean test. So bear with me today. Okay, now he's telling, doing some really silly mistakes. If we find a word in a dictionary, okay, let's keep it set. Dictionary dot find new world is not equal to new world dot end. Okay, new world is equal to new world. That is one more issue. Is it to if I find a word in a dictionary and it is not equal to oh sorry no oh, I'm doing so many silly mistakes okay I haven't explored all the parts why I'm exploring back I am doing backtracking for sure and I need to return. I need to explore that particular thing that is correct and what I need to do yeah I am exploring everything what's the issue I am pushing that word as well into my parents as well as I am pushing that word as well so where I did mistake I may miss any case uh, I am just checking whether that particular it is not fine then I am just pushing into the queue I am for this new word okay what I am doing from particularly from start I reach I just uh, making this new word a word as a parent yeah that thing I am doing in a good way okay now let's try to debug it Okay, let's try to debug. There is the issue. So now let's try to check for each particular word. Uh, what is the parent kind of array? Let's we have been given a. Okay, let's first try for this. Itself, this one. There's only one line in the input. Uh, the the dictionary first integer is the size of the array and the get elements in the array let's say we have been given word 4 and uh, in the dictionary and we have been given words as can paste it second last and the last thing are taken as start and end respectively let's try to test Oh, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. It is standing now. One thing I missed I need to push something into the current first because what I'm doing, I'm pushing the parent. So, what about the initial thing? So, I should push that thing as well. Yeah, so that is, I guess, that's why there is nothing. Yeah, that is the mistake. Fine. Uh, finally, we solved it. But yeah, uh, we messed up a lot in this question. The idea is let's now try to analyze the complexity part of it. The point is the way we are solving, we are maintaining a queue, and the complexity for maintaining a queue, it's kind of the number of words it can have, and and I am visiting each word only once because I am pushing a word only once because I'm just checking the visiting case here. So the thing is every word will be pushed only one at a time. So it will be around that part will come as a complexity of number of words in the dictionary. And other than that, uh, what I'm doing, I'm using the backtracking technique. And in that backtracking technique, I'm exploring every possible path for a particular node. Uh, so the point is now that may end up in a n factorial thing so the overall complexity for this particular problem can go up to n factorial uh, so this is about this question we have already taken so much time for this problem okay now let's discuss one more problem today okay let's take one more difficult problem let's say this one sorry for this thing okay now what we have been given we have been given a 2d board and a word 
we need to find if that word exists in the grid or not okay the word can be constructed from lattice of sequentially adjacent cells where adjacent cells are those horizontally and vertically neighboring the cell itself doesn't count as an adjacent cell the same letter cell may be used more than once okay the the question is we have been given a uh, basically a matrix and we need to check whether we can construct a word out of this matrix or not and the given thing is from any position where i can go to build a word to any of its adjacent positions that what i can do and by just doing this thing i just need to check whether i can construct a particular word or not so this thing that i need to do but i will summarize again the question is what we have been given we have been given a kind of a matrix where the each element of the matrix representing a word fine now what i need to do let's say i need to construct a particular word with the help of this matrix and i can start from any point from this matrix and i can go to its adjacent position only and i can go to its adjacent position and i just what i need to do by just doing this sort of operation i just need to check whether i can create that particular word or not if i can create that particular word i need to return true otherwise i need to return false this is my question basically so the point is let's say the test case is that is being given to me the first test case that is being given a b c c e d so as we can see that i let's say i just start from the very first element of the matrix and then i can go here and then i can go here and then i can go here then a b c and then i can go here and then i can go here and then i can go here so i can create of that word from the help of this particular matrix so i can safely return one now for the other word let's say i can create c from that particular word or not so let's see where are s available to me here and here from here i can see that there is no e available in the adjacent so i can't create a word c from this s but yeah i can create c from this s i can go here and then i can go here so the question is clear to us so what we can do to solve this question what is the basic thing that is coming to our mind what is been given to us we have been given a matrix and we need to check for the words check for the words these are the things that we need to do okay uh one thing that what we can do is which sort of thing that i need to apply to check that thing uh, one thing is coming to my mind okay let's say if i i don't know about the starting position let's say i can fix my starting position to any of the word which is equal to the first character of the given word so i can do in that way will i be able to solve if i just explore from that particular path okay uh, if i apply any traversal let's say dfs or bfs uh, can i able to solve this problem or not let's check let's say i need to construct a word a b c c e d let's say i am at a and what i can do i can explore all the possible ways i can go to i can go from here the basic dfs or bfs approach i can apply okay but the point is when i just reach b but the word can be equal to a b a if the word is equal to a b a then the point is from a i need to go to b and then again i need to go to a fine so the point is i can't maintain some sort of visit information the point is i need to traverse up till when it is possible but the one thing is i i can do to break out from the kind of dfs or bfs uh, but i am thinking is what i can do i can store some sort of index that will help me to identify at which particular index of that particular word i am at with the help of that i can achieve something i can solve my problem so to deal with that i can track index for breaking okay if i just manage to use all this information i can solve this question okay as i need to go from all all the adjacent nodes from that particular node one thing that i can do i can create first the directions uh this is the basic thing uh that you can also do while if you want to explore even directions okay now this is done now the thing is now let's try to solve this question
okay let's let's say i am applying dfs here you can apply bfs as well but the point is one thing that you need to be sure that you can't maintain some sort of visit information because that is not required in this question okay so what we can do to solve this as i know that my starting point can be any particular character of that matrix so let's first rather than that what i can do i just need to just figure out the length which will be a dot size and what will be the width of my matrix it will be something like this now what i can do i have my length and width i can check the edge cases if my length is zero but basically i don't have any element so what i can do i can return false because i won't be able to create a word in that particular case so i need to return zero okay so i i trade over my lens and then i can check first whether the basically the particular character okay one more thing if i have been given nothing if b dot size is zero this is also an edge case because in that case i am automatically figure out that word so i need to return one in that case so you can check only then what i can do i can apply the dfs so now now what should i pass to that function okay that function should return me boolean for sure or one or zero i can keep it as int as well let's for simplicity let's keep it as boolean okay let's keep it as boolean and let's say we have a dfs and in that dfs what sort of things that is required the very first thing that is required is my current position so let's say this is as x y and the index basically so i j and 1 because i already checked that yeah i figured out a particular answer okay my answer is let's say i initialize it with i keep it as bool as well and i just initialize it with okay i just initialize it with fall false or two you can initialize if i just find the answer here i can just do answer equal to answer or dfs and in the end i can get an answer fine sounds good to me okay so how i can do now what i what i should do now okay i need to pass my string as well as that particular vector as well because i need those information for sure okay tell us my string b these are the things that i need to pass if the particular index it's equal to okay b dot size that means i figured out i don't need to go any further and i can safely return to in that case otherwise what i need to do okay i need to move to all the possible directions i know as i know i have four directions so i have my x updated to like this and i have my y updated to something like this now i need to check whether that particular x y uh, lies in the matrix or not so i need to check if these x y are valid as well as my particular the next element the element at x and y it should be equal to b i d x If this is the case only then i can i need to proceed otherwise i don't need to proceed so i can uh, move my dfs to for this as well i can initialize my answer to false i can do the similar thing as i was doing before it will be equal to answer answer right simply or as well so this is operator so x basically now y a and then b and i then need to return answer so i need to maintain that valid function as well 
need to pass length as well as width for these as well. Copy this issues. So the valid should be also a boolean. The thing is, now I have my coordinates and I have my length as well as width with me. So I need to return true only when my x is greater than zero and is x is less than length and y is greater than zero and y is less than width. If that is the case, in that case I need to return true and now I am just end up here, I need to return true. That's been given to me. Fine. I have been given length, width. These are the things that is being given to me. If we have length as zero, then I need to return zero. If we have been given the size as zero, then I need to return one. Fine. Looks like a good thing to me. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. It should be A as well as B that I need to pass. And I need to pass the express one as well there. Nice. Let's submit the code now. Why we are getting error? Have I missed anything? Tracking every possible position as a starting position. And we are checking if that is the first character. We are moving, applying the DFS. Okay. Should write it as zero. Because from this as well, I need to move to all the possible directions. I'm applying DFS only when when we have this thing. I have I J zero A B. Now I am checking if I have that particular element at that particular index and it is equal to and it is valid it's greater than zero, greater than equal to zero. Let's check now why, why, what, what is wrong. We have been given B A B A C and this is the matrix that has been given to us. And now am I missing anything? I have been given length as well as I have been given width. I am checking if my length is zero, then I need to return zero. If the size is zero, then I need to return one for sure. There is nothing wrong in this thing. Now I am initializing my answer to false. That is good. Now. I am iterating over all my matrix. Uh, let's, it's not required because it's okay. We are just optimizing it. If we have that particular element in the matrix, it is equal to B0, then only I'm applying. And what I am doing, and I'm just taking it, this is my answer or this. If this is returning true, then this will automatically becomes true. So there is no problem in that front. Now, what I am doing, if I end up exploring all the string then I need to return true that is good now what I am doing I need to first I just figure out the length and then I figure out the width and which is equal to a zero dot size that is cool now what I am doing I am exploring all the directions and with each possible direction what I am doing I am checking whether this is valid or not okay and for the validity thing, what I am doing, I am checking it should be greater than equal to length, grizo x less than n, y is greater than equal to zero, and it should be less than width. That is correct. And if I have that particular element in the matrix is equal to this thing, so what I can do if that is the case, sorry, if let's say from that particular node I have figured out that particular element, and now I just what I just need to do, I just figured out that node that is equal to that particular index. Let's say it is zero, let idx is zero. And uh, that should be my starting position. Yeah, I shouldn't do in that way. Yeah, other than that, yeah, because automatically this will lead to wrong answer only. If uh, basically if a of x, y is not equal to b idx, then in that case, 
I can safely return false. Otherwise, only then I need to move. And as I move, this thing will automatically will be take care of. Yeah. Now what I am doing, I am passing it and removing it. Now this will be fine. Okay. The thing is, what we are doing now, the there is a concern of efficiency. Efficiency now. Why? Because what we are doing, we are just applying this DFS every time. We are just applying this DFS every time. Uh, one thing that what we can do to make our algorithm efficient. What thing? One thing that is coming to my mind. If I am getting my answer as Q, I can safely return one here as well. And even here, I can optimize something like this. If I figure out my answer, I can return true from here only. Yeah. I don't need to explore all the possible things by doing that way. Fine. Solve this problem. The point is uh, why we are doing it in that way. The thing is basically why I was getting the wrong answer in the previous case because what I am do I what I was doing I was checking when I was checking here that particular condition. The thing is, I already checked it for the, the here. So one thing that I missed there that all the cases won't be covered if I just add that particular case. But if I just add that case in the beginning only, then I am sure that now this particular for this particular mat, uh, matrix element, this is equal to that particular index. Now can safely go further. There won't be any issues. So we are already ahead of today's time. Yeah, let's first let's also analyze the time complexity for this algorithm as well. What we are doing in our case, we are applying DFS for every possible node, isn't it? For uh, we are applying DFS for every possible node, and the point is in in that particular DFS, we may end up in a worst case, end up in all the particular kind of the matrix, but uh, it won't be kind of a possible possible thing. But in the worst case. I may end up exploring all the possible elements of the matrix. So, and I am applying DFS from each element as well. But the point is, I am applying DFS up till when the size of the particular element, up till when the size of the particular string doesn't end. So, overall complexity for this will be the length of the particular string as well as the size of the particular matrix. So, n into m into the particular length of the string as well. So this will be the total complexity. So this is all about today's lecture guys.